Hello, I am Monica. September is here, and with it, a gift for all of you. The new OpenZava 7.4, packed with new features that we are sure will delight you. Finally, it will be easy to add a dashboard to your applications without needing to integrate any third-party products in true OpenZava style. But there's more. We've improved the user interface for lists and collections with a pop-up menu for row actions, making the interface cleaner. This also allowed us to add new actions to collections without complicating the interface. That's not all. We have more than 30 new features, many of which are practical improvements you've been asking for over time. Traditionally, to include a dashboard in an OpenZava application, it was necessary to integrate it with a third-party tool, such as Grafana, Apache Superset, or Google Charts. However, this was quite complicated and laborious. That's why many of you have been asking for an easier way to create dashboards in OpenZava, and here it is. We have opted to find the most natural solution possible for an OpenZava programmer, but let's see it in action. And here we have a dashboard generated with the new OpenZava. At the top, we can see some large numbers accompanied by an icon. Then, we see a bar chart, another row of numbers. And we finish with two lists in a simple format without actions, without embellishments, easy to read. Of course, this is just an example. We can arrange the elements in any order and layout we like. Let's see how this is done. It's not automatic because it's impossible to automatically determine what information will be useful to the user. That decision has to be made by the user or a developer who knows the user's domain well. However, it's very easy and very much in the OpenZava style. Let's take a look at the code. To create our dashboard, we only need to write a transient class, which in this case we've called staff dashboard. This class contains the typical at view annotation, which allows us to decide what will be displayed and in what layout. In the first row, we have four numeric properties. Then we have the turnover evolution collection, which is displayed as a bar chart. Another four numeric properties, and finally two collections that are shown as two simple lists. The key is that we have new annotations with new editors to display data differently, like a large display. In this case, we associate it with a calculated property, with a getter only, called staff count. In the example, we return a fixed value, but here you can write the necessary Java logic to return the correct value. With a large display, the value is displayed with a large font and an optional associated icon. We can use the suffix attribute to indicate the suffix. There is also a prefix attribute. For money properties, the prefix and suffix are automatic. If we want a bar chart, we define a conventional collection, annotated with a chart. The collection elements can be of any type. In this case, we've created a simple class called staff turnover that contains just the properties we want in the chart. But we can also use existing JPA entities that are already defined, even directly visualize one-to-many or many-to-many -many collections. The at chart annotation has the data properties and label properties attributes in case we're using an existing class with many properties and want to choose which ones to use in the chart. Finally, we have the simple lists, which are normal collections that we've annotated with the new at simple list annotation, so they are displayed as simple read-only lists, without actions, in a clean and simple way. These three new annotations, at large display, at chart, and at simple list, are useful for creating a dashboard, but they are also available for use in any OpenZava entity. We can use at large display to display the total of an invoice or a chart to show an inventory evolution chart in the detail mode of a product, for example. For our transient class to be available to the user, we need to add it as a module in application.xml. All we need to do is add the init model with new instance controller, which instantiates a staff dashboard and assigns it to the view. Finally, we add a bit of CSS in our custom.css to set margins and a maximum size, so it stays centered and well-aligned. 
And that's it. A transient class with a few getters and some annotations, a bit of CSS, and we have our dashboard. We have also improved the row actions for lists and collections. For example, in this case where we only have two actions, it works as before, showing an icon for each action. But what happens when there are more than two actions? Let's see. Notice, a direct icon appears for the first action, but then we have a little button with three dots. When you click it, the rest of the actions appear. Now that we can have more actions without polluting the user interface, we have taken the opportunity to add two new actions to the collections. The first is the delete action, which not only removes the item from the collection but also deletes the record from the database. In this case, if you click it, it would delete the client Juanillo. The action that used to remove from the list without completely deleting is now called remove from list. The second action is open in a new tab, which opens the collection record in its own module in a new tab. Let's try it. We click on Juanillo and the client module opens in another tab showing us Juanillo. The dashboard and the new actions for collections will delight your users. But there's much more in version 7.4, such as the add no defaults action annotation that allows a collection to exclude the cut and paste, export to PDF, and export to Excel actions. Also, the new at search list tab to indicate the tab that the dialog should use to search in references and collections without needing to write an action. Support for local date time for properties. Now, automatic PDF listings include a record counter. Or that when typing the year and month in a date field, it auto-completes the year. This and more than 30 new improvements. To know all the details, I recommend checking the full announcement on the openexsava.org blog. In the video description, you will find the direct link. Additionally, the announcement contains detailed instructions to update your applications to OpenZava 7.4. Bye.